why Nigeria can never forget General Sani Abasha. This is a story of the gun and the boots. It is a story of greed, power, and dictatorship. Nigeria is a casualty, and the Commonwealth of Nigerians has been stolen. After 24 years of democratic return as a country, we are yet to recover from the scars of the dictators. In 1966, there was a coup against Iranzi. In 1975, coup against Gowan. In 1983, coup against Shagari. 1985, coup against Buhari. In 1993, coup against Shinnecon. One man participated in all these successful coup plots in Nigeria until he became the head of state. His name is General Sani Abasha. The young generation of Nigerians may only know his name from the never ending Abasha loot, but now, we devolved into the life and times of Nigerians' agreeable most bruiser dictator in this special report by Karaka Reports Nigeria. I am Adedeji Keme Faith. Abasha was a trained military officer. He was a man of few words. And when it comes to power to sell, survivor and taking out his enemies, he was a specialist. Coming into power in late 1993, Abasha established a death squad in Asorok to eliminate all real and perceived threats to his dictatorship. The death squad was called Strike Force and it was led by his chief security officer, Amza Hal Mustafa. It may interest you that the strike force team was made up of 75 people recruited mostly the police and the military. They were mostly trained by the Israeli Mozart and fellow dictator, Gaddafi's security architecture in Libya and in North Korea. Their job was simple, to hunt down and kill Abasha's enemy. The most famous strike force member was Barnabas Jabila Michelia. His code name was Sergeant Rogers. The death squad was Abasha's response to the growing local and international rejection of his government. In fact, the Abasha regime foiled its coup attempt in five years. Roger confessed to have gone on three assassination operations on the order of Amza al Mustafa. He was to kill Alice Ibro on February 2nd, 1966. He also killed Kodorat Abiola on June 4, 1966. Then he attempted to kill Ibrahim Adesoya on January 14th, 1997. He shot Alice Ibro in the eyes. He killed Kodorat in the traffic. Pa Adesoya, who was himself arguably fortified with African powers, survived. The Abasha government shot dead Kudurat Abiola in a white Mercedes Benz by a gunshot to the forehead. Oregon Road was renamed the Kudurat Abiola Way. Meanwhile, several other noticeable Nigerians were killed by Sunny Abasha government, including Sheu Mustavaya Adoa through a fatal injection in a Bakalike prison. Dr. Shola Omoshola and his cousin, Nelson Kazim, Chief Alfred Obeyiwa Rewane, Simon Akwata, Tene Akwata's dad, Alhaji Suliat Adideji, a business tycoon, Mr. Femi Uyewo, medical director, B. Sivat PLC, Chief Mrs. Abuyi Tejosho, the Iyaludi of Ebaland. Apart from the looting, 
Abasha's brutality was epic and legendary, and Nigeria will never forget. Watch out for the concluding parts of this special report.